If the Giants editor is still closed, we shall open it again by double-clicking on its desktop icon. The Giants editor consists of the following elements. A toolbar on the top of the editor. To the left is the scene graph. The middle space is reserved for the current scene. And the right side features the attributes panel. Down here is the editor's console. Let's have a look at the upper part of the editor. Via file, we are able to either create new files or open up existing ones, import external files, or export the current project. By clicking on Preferences, we are able to change any pre-made settings of the editor. Edit lets us cut, copy, or duplicate a current selection and paste it. With Create, we can add new transform groups, light sources, cameras, audio sources, navigation meshes, or simple objects such as cubes or planes. View changes the currently selected camera, switches between rendered or wireframe view within the scene, and lets us tweak all sorts of other display settings. In the Scripts tab, we are able to load up any external scripts, link them to the objects on our map, or edit them with the help of the script editor. In the Window panel, we can activate or deactivate several windows, such as the Attributes, Terrain Editing, or Material window, and much more. With the help of the Reset Window Layout button, we are able to reset all of the windows and panels back to the default settings. Last but not least, the Help window gives us access to the aforementioned links to the GDN, the Community Forum, or additional video tutorials. We can also look up the currently installed editor version number here. Further down, there is the toolbar, a row of several helpful icons. The first icon stands for creating a new i3d file. The button next to it lets us open up an already existing one. It's also possible to open up an i3d file with the help of a text editor, if we have set one in our preferences. The green arrows reload the current i3d file. The next two buttons are used to either save the current project or save as. This button lets us import an i3d file. Both buttons next to it either undo the last action or repeat it. The play button turns on physics in the current scene. The house icon switches between the local and global mode regarding the pivot movements. The magnet next to it either activates or deactivates the grid snapping feature. The next four icons are used to switch between the Terrain Sculpt, Terrain Detail Texture Paint, Terrain Info Layer Paint, or Terrain Foliage Paint mode, used for mapping with our Giants Editor. The last two buttons are used to reload a single or all textures of an object. Below the toolbar and its icons, we find the scene graph to the left. Several cameras, light sources, objects, transform groups, and their children are listed here. Clicking on the small plus or minus icons here will open or close the parent groups and their children. In the center of the editor is the project scene, from the perspective of the currently selected camera. Cameras can be changed in the View tab. We are able to move the camera by pressing Alt and the mouse buttons. Pressing the Alt key and the left mouse button turns the camera. Pressing Alt and the mouse wheel translates the camera to the left and right, as well as up and down. Alt and the right mouse button moves the camera back and forth. Pressing Ctrl and either plus or minus on the numpad will raise or lower the current navigational speed for these actions here. When clicking on an object in the scene graph, we are able to view additional information within the attributes window to the right. For now, these are most of the basic functions of the Giants Editor. In the next video, we will have a look at how to properly build a mod map from scratch.